We haven't done no practicing, but. <clears throat> what a friend we have in Jesus. Hey. <clears throat>
So close to him. Hey. Thank God for that. Glad to have Brother Henderson with us tonight. He's leaving out Friday, he says, going back to Mexico. And uh, we're glad he could come by and, and be with us tonight in the service. Thank you for coming. Hey. Turn your Bibles to the book of uh, Luke, chapter number 22. Luke chapter 22. I'm going to start reading here. Let's see in verses number 28. Chapter 22, verses 28. <clears throat> you are they which have continued with me in my temptation. <clears throat> and I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father hath appointed unto me. That ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen the brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou hast thrust denied that thou knowest me. Look at verse 55. And when they had kindled the fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. That was his first mistake right there, sitting down in the wrong crowd. Verse 56. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire, earnest to look upon him, and said, This man was also with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. That's number one. Right. And after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I'm not. That's number two. Right. About the space of three hours after another confidential affirming, saying this of a truth, this fellow also is with him, for he is a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. Number three. And immediately, cock, and immediately when he yes, spake the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how that he said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Right. Now, I want to talk in a little bit, I want to talk about verse number 31, it'll be our subject or text. Before I do, I want to say a word about Simon Peter. We know that he was uh, uh, not, not the average, I guess would be the word. He was a man that walked on the water and a man that had some fight in him to come to rest Jesus. Right. He was the one who wanted to build three tabernacles upon the mountain. Right. And uh, so he was kind of extraordinary, I guess would be the word. We know that he was very outspoken and most time he was doing the talking. He was a spokesman of the group. Right. And we do know that he denied, denied the Lord three times here like the Lord told him he would. We know that he went fishing when he didn't supposed to be going fishing. Right. And many things are said about Peter. But one thing about him, I like the last verse I read. It said the Lord turned and looked at him and it said Peter went out and wept bitterly. Right. Regardless of all his faults and fears and the things that he did wrong, he had a repentant heart. Hey, hey. I love people that will repent. Yes, sir. I believe the Lord loves people hey. that will repent. Yes, sir. And so he went out and wept bitterly. Hey. The Lord didn't have to say anything to him. He just looked at him. He remembered what he'd already said. And he went out and wept bitterly. Hey, thank God. Yes, so thank sir. God for anybody that will repent. Yes, sir. That will repent. Amen. But now I just want to put that in, I guess, for good measure. But I want to look at verse number 31. The Lord said, Simon, Simon. Now, when he says it twice, that I mean, uh, it's very important. It means, means business. The Bible always means business. But right. if you remember, when the, Jesus said, I am the door, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door. Yes, sir. Right. Sometimes it says verily, sometimes it says verily, verily. 
That wants to get your attention. Right, right. If you remember when, the, when Abraham carried his son upon the mountain, the Lord called him one time to go. But when he got up there and started to take his life, he said, Abraham, Abraham, he called him twice and stopped yes. him. Amen. And so uh, it means it's something important here. And he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Yes. And I'll talk a few minutes tonight on uh, about Satan's big sifter. He's got a big sifter. Oh, yes. Yeah. You say, how big is it? I don't know. But it's big enough to get everybody he possibly can in it and sift them this week. You're right. I mean, he wants to. And I, I remember some of you young folk don't know what a sifter is. I don't guess. You don't even know what I'm talking about. But uh, there's a big crowd of us. There's 10 in our family. And yeah. my mama had a big sifter. Right. I mean, she had a big sifter. I, I mean, after we was married and a few years on, I had them little old sifters with a crank on the side of them, and you'd turn them a little and sift for that. But uh, I ain't talking about that. She had a big sifter. It was as big as that, not that little part, but it was as big as that whole thing. And I'm satisfied it was bigger than that whole thing. Right. For there's 10 of us, 10 kids and mom and dad is a dozen of us had to eat. And so it took a whole lot of bread. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. what that big sifter do, she'd get that meal or flour, whichever, both of them were, and uh, pour it in there and uh, sift it and all the good would come through. Make good uh, bread out of it. Amen. And it just leave the bread, what was no good, to cast away what you'd throw away. Right. It's all it left up in here. Right. I'll show you something, then I'll get on what I'm trying to say. But uh, she would get that flour and meal in there, and she'd do it like that. Yeah. That's what's called sifting it. Yeah. It didn't have a crank handle on it, they just had a big old sifter. And she'd do it like that, and the good would fall through. But watch this now. If you didn't shake it around, well, we ain't talking about a strainer. All y'all know about them little old strainers. You put anything in, all the water strains through it, and the good stuff stays in there. And I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about a sifter. And you put it in there, and as long as you don't shake it, it won't fall through. Right, right. Y'all didn't know it, did you? As long as you don't shake it, it won't fall through. Right. Right. If it did, you couldn't sift it, just fall through as you poured it in. You're right. But you have to shake that thing to get it sift. To get the good to come through, you have to shake. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so she'd shake that around like that, and uh, about all it'd fall through, all it she'd get come through. And uh, when she'd uh, do that, she'd uh, tap the side of it, loosen that up on the side, uh -huh. and shake it again. And I believe that Satan's got some people in his sifter. He sifted all the good he can out of them. He's about ready to tap the sides and yeah. shake the rest of it out. Yeah. Any good on the inside? I'll tell you, he's got a big sifter. You better listen to me now. You're right. The devil has got a big sifter. You're right. And so he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you that he might sift you like wheat. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, the Bible said at least Satan to get advantage of us. We're not ignorant of his devices. Be sober, be filled, because your adversary of the devil, like a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom may defile. Yeah. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trials, which is a trial yet. Yeah. So some strange thing happened to you. Jesus said, if you're all the world, the world will love its own, because you're all the world, but I've shown you all the world. Therefore the world hateth you. And uh, so Satan hates you, the world hates you, they hate me, and he wants to sift everybody he can, all the good out of it. Right. Just right. leave the throwaway hey. that sifter. You know what they do, that brand? We call it brand. I don't know where he got that word at. You know what, that, what you done with that? Throw it out to the chickens, let the chickens in. Give it to the hogs or something like that. No good for nothing. Just while I was thrown away, the castaway. And so Satan wants to sift everything good out of our life and just leave the castaway to be thrown out. It ain't worth nothing else. Right. 
I'm proud the Lord said, I prayed for you, Simon, that your faith fell not. His faith didn't fail. His flesh fell, but his faith didn't fail. Lord, just let me see that sometime back. I think that's right. His faith didn't fail. He had plenty of faith after that. Yes, sir. At that, at that particular time, his flesh fell. Right. And if Peter's flesh fell, what about ours? Amen. Don't you think our flesh will fail us too? In fact, I know it'll fail us. Amen. Amen. And so uh, he wants to sift all the good out of it. First of all, I want to say, he wants to sift all our faith. Yes, sir. And uh, you say, what about why is faith so important? Well, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us about that faith. It said by faith about 22 times. Yeah. And uh, so uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. That's the reason faith is important. The Bible said this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen. We can't overcome this world if we don't have faith in God. You're right. You say, what is real faith? Real faith believes it can be done yeah. when everybody around you is saying it can't be done. You're right. Amen. You say, that's pretty strong. That's real faith. You're right. Amen. It's real faith. Just believe God can do it. Believe God will do it. And everybody else thinks he won't. Amen. I'm proud he will. Amen. So uh, he wants to sift us of that faith. All that faith, get that faith out of us. You're right. And if he gets our faith, he's just about got us. Yes, sir. We ain't going to do nothing without faith in God. You're right. We just ain't going to do nothing. Amen. Now, Abraham staggered not the promise of God through unbelief. He is strong in faith, giving glory to God. Amen. And so we need to be strong in faith. God help us today that we'll be strong in faith. Amen. Peter and was uh, in Luke chapter 5, there's over our fishing, and they had fished all night and caught the thing that's, that's washing their nets. The Bible said this, going, turn in, that's going back home. Is that washing their nets? Jesus passed by us and said, to, uh, told them to, got in one of the ships and said to thirst out a little from the land. They did. He talked to people a while. And then he said to them, said, lunch out in the deep and let down your net for a draw tonight. Yeah. Now watch this. Here's real faith. Peter said, Master, we've toiled all night. They knew how to fish. Mm -hmm. That's from here with them waters. They'd probably fished there plenty of time. Right. But there's out of the will of God and they fished all night and didn't even probably get a bite. Uh -huh. And he said, Master, we've taught all night and hadn't caught anything. Nevertheless, at thy word, Amen. Lord, whatever you say, we'll just do it and see what happens. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise yes, God. Sir. And I if we'll do that and have that kind of faith, something good will happen. Yes, sir. Hey, they caught so many fish, you had to get their partners to come help them gather them in. Hey. Yeah. Thy word, at thy word, Lord, whatever you say, we'll do it. That's real faith in God. Amen. But he won't sift us for all our faith. They don't say he wants to sift us for all of our joy. He's right. doing a good job at that. Yeah. I hate to say that. Right. You hate to make a statement like that, but I'm just telling you the truth. You're right, He's man. doing a good job sifting everybody that joy. You're right. And uh, you say, why is joy so important? Well, the Bible said the joy of the Lord is strength. Right. And the more joy we have, the more strength we'll have. Yeah. The less joy we have, the least strength, less strength we'll have. Amen. And so we need that strength in these last days. Uh, and then uh, another thing about that joy. If you don't enjoy doing anything, you ain't going to do it too much. You're right. That's the reason some people just come to church one time a week. They don't enjoy it as good as I do. <laughs> you say you're bragging little. No, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. Right. Amen. I enjoy it enough to come three times. Hey, hey. If I come over here and don't get anything out of it, just guess what? I'm going to come back next Sunday to see if I can get something next Sunday. Oh, hey. I don't quit because I don't feel like I don't get nothing out of certain. Come on. Lord God, if I had, I'd have quit years ago. Come on. Hurry. I mean, you got, sometimes you have to travel this road to faith a little bit. Right. And I tell you, there's joy. Remember then, there's joy 
and serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said there's joy in serving the Lord. Amen. And now here's what here's what the devil wants us to do. I was just saying about this today, I guess it was just sometime. Here's I hope we don't do it. <laughs> but here's exactly what the devil here's what the devil wants us to do. He wants us to drag in and he wants to endure the service yeah. and then he wants us to leave and go home complaining. Yeah. Come on. Come on. You're absolutely right. You're right. Amen. Amen. He's got something in his shift he's just about got him doing that. Come on. Come on. That's exactly what he wants us to do. Amen. He knows if we do that we're not going to get anything out of service and we're certain that God's going to help nobody else. Lord have mercy. Yeah, you right. You right. The Bible said, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Joy! He that goeth forth weeping, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again and rejoice and bring his sheaves with him. And the Bible said, Weeping may end there for a night, but joy. Joy is coming! Thank God in the morning. Amen. And uh, You're right. sometimes you think you're just about getting, a, for a couple of weeks, I was. About, Thought I was about to get in this sifter. I couldn't do no good. I couldn't preach. And, you know, throat's messed up. And, and uh, I just got plumbed down. And, uh, but I'm proud I got out of that sifter. I don't, I don't stay in there, buddy. No, sir. I'm get out of that sifter. You're right about that. If you ain't careful, you'll get down. I mean, right. you, right. you get down when things are not going well and things like that. And, you get down if you're not Tell careful, you lose right. some of that jaw. That right. And uh, here's what here, here's what we need to pray that prayer. And the Bible said, Create me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, and restore to me the joy of thy salvation. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Paul said now these same movement. I might finish my course with joy. That's right. That lame man in Acts chapter three. When he got healed, he went through that temple walking, leaping, praising God. Yes, sir. But I will tell you all this, I don't fit it up, but I was a preacher at New Prospect one time several years ago, and it's having revival, best I remember, and different preacher. And, and I was preaching that night, and there's a pretty good crowd there. And, and there's a little fellow over here, he's an older fellow, sitting right there on that bank, about where Scott is at. And uh, I was a preaching over there in Acts chapter 3 about that man. And I said, that man, I don't know, he, he, he might have kind of wrecked the service that day. I don't know if he did or not. I don't know what they're used to in that service. The Bible said he went leaping and jumping and praising God. Just about time I said he went leaping and jumping, that man jumped right straight up. And he come out here and went down that aisle leaping and jumping about knee high. He was a kind of old fellow. I said he was doing just exactly like I was doing right there. <laughs> He did. He, he, he done that. It's the first time I ever saw him before him. That time I said he was leaping and jumping and praising God, he jumped up and run down that aisle leaping. Uh, not many people leaps in the church house, I don't guess, but he did that now. You're right about that. Where'd he get to? Yeah, I know where he got to. Satan's got a big sifter. Yeah. He wants to get everybody that he can. He wants to sift all the good out of them. Mm -hmm. He wants to get our faith. He wants to get our joy. Yeah. And he wants to get our power. Yeah. Well, he wants to get our power. But I tell you, if there's a link missing our church today, it's the power of God. You're right. We need the power, the power, the power more than anything. Amen. If we have the power, like we'll have everything else and take care of itself. Hey, hey. Lord of mercy. The Bible said over there in, in Luke chapter 5, it, it said that uh, there's doctrine to the lost st uh, standing by, and, and it didn't say nothing about what special thing them doctor to the law was doing, but it said the next line, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Mm -hmm. right, right. That's the important thing, the power of the Lord. Hey. No matter who the doctors are, just show the power of the Lord. <laughs> hey. 
Paul said in my speech and my preaching, it won't within enticing words of men's wisdom. His demonstration of the spirit and the power of God. That your faith and not stand the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. The power to preach, power to pray. Yep. Power to witness. Right. And on and on is just so, right, so many right, things. Right. So many things to be said. Right. And then he wants to sift us for all our courage. You're right there. We lose courage. We can't do much for the Lord. You're right. It's just hard to do anything much yeah. for the Lord when we lose that courage. <clears throat> we just had a little bit of that courage that David had when he went to, went to fight with that giant. Can you imagine that big old giant over on that side of the mountain on the hill, 10 foot tall? Mm -hmm. And uh, little David over here on this hill, just a hollow between them, a valley between them. And... Uh, you know, when uh, they set the armors and decided to go fight with each other, the Bible said David went running toward that man. Yep. Yes, sir. Been, but us, we'd turn went the other way, I guess. We'd been running all right, we'd all run the other way. But he ran toward him. Right. If we just had just a little bit of that courage you had in his heart that day, there ain't no telling what the Lord do for us. Amen. What shall we then say to these things if God be for us and be against us? Amen. We're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hey. And then he wants to sift us our determination. We need to be determined. Hey. Yeah. Determined. The grace of God, we're going to stay with the stuff. Yes, sir. And we're going to pray till the Lord sends a power in our life. And Amen. Does something special for us and helps us that we as old saying, get over the hump and be able to go for God. Amen. <laughs> and so we need uh, people who will stay with the stuff. And I, I know the ones that's here tonight, we've got the crowd that usually stays with the stuff. I know that on private night. But I tell you, we'll determine in our heart, by God's grace, we're going to stay with the stuff. Hey. No matter what others do, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what our best friends do, we're going to stay with the stuff. Yes, sir. Joshua said, it's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Amen. And Elisha said, uh, Elijah told Elisha to go back. And he said, no. He said, uh, Lord God, live with thy soul. If I'm going to leave, I'm going to stay with you. So he stayed with him to the end. And he got a double portion of the spirit Amen. of power upon him. We need to purpose in our heart and determine in our heart we're going to stay with it until we get, we get what the Lord is said we could have. He's, prom He's promised this Bible full of promises right here. Right. And if we just pay the price and do what we need to do. But Satan's got a big sifter. Don't you ever doubt that? He's got a big sifter. You're absolutely right. And by the way, he has no respect to person who gets in that sifter. That's right. He just soon get me in as he gets You're you. Right. He don't make it, it right. If, if, if Simon, he was spokes from the group and, and we would think he was a leader out of the twelve, you know, in reading the Bible. And uh, it's, it's amazing the Lord told Simon Peter that he didn't tell the other eleven man. And even though Satan does want to sift everybody, but he pointed out Simon. Right. Simon, Simon, the whole Satan desired to have you that he might sift you like we. Mm -hmm. So if he wants to sift Simon Peter, you know he wants to sift us. Right. right. Sift all the good out of us. No, we can't do anything for God. But uh, I'm just so proud we're on the winning side. Hey! I read in the Bible one time, Acts 5, I believe it is. It said, of this house, this work, be a man, he'll come not. But said, if it be of God, you can't overthrow it. You're right. And uh, at least you'll be found to fight against God. I sure won't want to be trying to fight against God. Right. I want to be on his side. Amen. I want to be on my side. Amen. I want to fight and battle with God. We're laborers together with God. That's the way it puts it in the New Testament. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for letting us be here soon tonight and saying, pray, and talk a little from the Word of God. I appreciate your presence, your power, and your love, and mercy, and grace. Just thank you for being so good, Lord. Without the Spirit of God, we'd all fall on our face and defeat. Except the Lord build the house and just labor in vain to build it. And uh, we're nothing without God. 
But I know Paul said I can do all things through Christ which strengthens Amen. me. Amen. So I pray you'll give us strength for the journey. Pray for everybody in this building tonight. Every individual, every family, everyone. Whatever the need in life is, whether it be spiritually, physical, financial, whatever, Lord. You meet every need according to the will of God. And may we purpose in our heart and determine in our heart tonight with the grace of God, we're going to do our best to stay in the middle of the road and stay in line with God and this Bible, the old time religion, and keep on pressing toward that mark in these last days and be faithful. Put in our hearts to be faithful, Lord. And bless Brother Henderson, Lord, as he leaves to go back to Mexico and on the road, you'd give him traveling mercy, take care of him. And uh, ever need this building, you'll meet, Lord, and we love you and thank you. If you'd let us live to Sunday, Sunday night, come back to church again, pray the power of God to meet with. Oh, God, I pray you'll meet with us, Lord, in a great way. And you get honor and glory. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name.